Ines Creativas presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings, I hope and trust. I still find you all, my dear friends. We are on the theme, the old time religion, and we want to consider for this morning, Deuteronomy, the chapter is eight. We begin reading at verse number 10 and work our way to verse number 20. This is what the Holman Bible reads as, at verse number 10. When you eat and are full, you will praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you don't forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his command, the ordinances and statutes I am giving you today. When you eat and are full, and build beautiful houses to live in, and your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold multiply, and everything else you have increases. Be careful that your heart doesn't become proud and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the place of slavery. Skip to verse 17. You may say to yourself, my power and my own ability have gained this wealth for me. But remember that the Lord your God gives you the power to gain wealth in order to confirm his covenant he saw to your father as is today. Verse 19. If you forget the Lord your God, and go after other gods to worship and bow to them. I testify against you today that you will perish. Like the nations the Lord is about to destroy before you, and you will perish if you do not obey the Lord your God. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we spend a moment in prayer. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, O oh, dear Lord, how we pray that you may remind us to keep your commandments, your statutes, and your ordinances. The blessings that you have placed in our hands, may they not be the reason why we will wander from thy grace. May they not be the reason why we will forget you and become proud. O oh, dear Lord, as we go into thy word, speak to our hearts and our minds at the same time. This has been our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, Amen. My good friends, as the custom is, we are going to raise just five points. Quick points. Notice at point number one, how Moses, as an elderly statesman, speaks to the children of Israel and he says, Now as you are about to go into the promised land, as you are about to claim your reward, as you are about to get there, the land that you go into is goodly. It is flowing with milk and honey. When you are there, food is guaranteed and you shall eat to your field. When you have eaten to your field, take not. Be careful. I love the way he places it. This is word of advice. Be careful that you do not forget. What should they forget? the commands, the statutes, and the ordinances that he gives unto them. For when we forget, we fail. And we fail by forgetting. So when we get to do that which the Lord has demanded of us, we have refused to forget. By complying, we are testamentary. We are evidence enough that we have not forgotten. And this is something that many a time we have decided to forget. What has the Lord commanded? Some will say these are not relevant to our time. They remain in the Old Testament. But as long as you are still seeking to claim a hold of the promises of God, seeking to claim a hold of the provisions of God, you want to take not. This is the old time religion. Do not forget the commandments, the statutes, and the ordinances of God, they remain applicable. We fail when we forget. And when we forget, we fail to keep the commandments of God. A point number two, he then goes on to enumerate, be careful not to become proud. 
Let not your heart become proud when you have amassed wealth, when you have a fat bank account, when you have a house that has a title deed that bears your name. Do not become proud. Moses is talking to those who shall amass wealth. And I hear his voice reverb through the corridors of time, headed to our epoch, to our era, to say, Hey, children of Israel of 2021, be not proud. Be careful. Be careful. Because these things sneaks upon you. And may I digress a bit. There are two types of pride. Moses speaks to the first part. I will also give you a glimpse of the second part. The first part of pride is what I would term pride that is rich or rich pride. And the second part is poor pride. Rich pride, I can almost wrap my hand around because this is someone who has a house, a double-story building, a three-story building, or at the corner stand, it is in his name. That person might get confused. This person has a fat bank account. This person does not only count herds. He has farms, employees, and all the assets that are therein. Surely these results in rich pride. You have a lot. It confuses you where it came from. You begin to think you are the originator of all these things. But most of us have what I term poor pride. Poor pride is where someone has nothing but pride itself. You can't even explain why they are proud. This person is just proud. You can't explain it. The source is unknown, but they just have it in abundance. Such are the people of today. They have no houses to their names. They're renting. They have not not even a single bull in a crow, but they're proud. They do not have even money in the bank account. They even have to hotspot from someone to access data. All they have is pride. Do not let it sneak upon you. Be careful. Be careful. At a point number three, we're still on the old time religion. Now Moses goes on to say, you want to take note when you are becoming proud. How will you know that now it's sneaking up upon me? Read verse 17. It says, you may say to yourself. When you begin to talk to yourself, when you begin to pamper yourself, then you will know pride is sneaking upon you. Be careful. And what will you be saying unto yourself? You'll be saying, my power and my own ability have gained this wealth for me. Fast forward into the book of Daniel, you shall find Nebuchadnezzar on one day, he walks on the rooftop and he says, isn't this the great Babylon I have built? When we begin to talk to ourselves, pride is getting to our heads and Moses doesn't end there. He gives timeless counsel at verse number 18. What does he say? Remember, remember, what should you remember? Oh, child of God, that the Lord your God gives you power to gain wealth. Whatsoever you hold in your hand, the power comes from God. You have not caused it to be. You have not arrived at it on your own. It has been on account of the provisions of God. And at point number three, when you begin to talk to yourself, be careful and begin to remember This reminds me, even when you get into the Ten Commandments, there is the fourth commandment that says, remember. For many a time, we are wont to forget. And many a time, there is a probability that we may forget. And at verse 19, he begins by saying, if you forget the Lord your God, This is a probability. It need not be something that is guaranteed in as much as John the Beloved writes and he says, children, oh little children, if you should sin, we have an advocate with the Father. If, if, that is a conditional statement, an if statement, sinning and forgetting God is not guaranteed in as much as we are fallen. This is not to be our destination. This is not to be our fate. We may forget that is a probability, but one thing is guaranteed. Should we forget? This is a corollary. It comes after. It follows. It is an only logical statement. If you forget the Lord your God and the conjunction, 
Go after other gods to worship and bow to them. When we forget, forgetfulness will mature into idol worship. When we forget, forgetfulness will mature into a, a, a neglect and a, a, a rejection of God and a rebellion against God to move towards idol worship. Be that as it may, the underlying point is this is a matter of worship. When we forget, when we are proud, when we refuse to acknowledge the power of God, we are headed down the lane of forgetfulness and idol worship. At point number five, as we come to a conclusion, notice how Moses ends at verse number 19. He makes this clear. He makes it so clear, and I have to read it again. I testify against you today, not tomorrow, not yesterday. Today, as you stand before me, I testify against you. And as you're watching this video, I too testify against you. You shall perish. That you will perish. That's what Moses says. Why will you perish? Because you have gone after other gods. You have denied the old time religion that sought to remind you, seek the path of God. Go back to his commandments and keep all ten of them. Keep all his statutes and live by his ordinances. Why? Because this is what the Lord has instructed. It does not get any simpler than that. We need not understand it. We just need to accept it. If the Lord has said so, then life is in his word. When he says it should be done, it shall be done. And Moses stands to testify and he tells them, if you refuse, if you choose, to forget because of time or forget because of resources that are at your disposal because you are gullible, you will perish. Let me take that again. If you forget because you have honestly forgotten, you will perish. If you forget because you have refused to reconcile your deeds to what the Lord has said, you will perish. If you forget because you have too many things in your hand, you can't juggle your finances, you can't juggle your program so that you can be in tandem with the will of God, you will perish. Am I preaching a gospel of doom? No, this is the reality. The wages of sin is death. Paul just picked it from here and repackaged it for us. The wages of sin is death. Gone are the days when people were told, if you do not keep the commandments of God, you will perish. Why will you perish? Because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and everything that was done was done by and through the word and it continues to exist to this day. And Paul says, when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, Christ was the rock that went ahead of them by day and by night. He was the one who gave the Ten Commandments unto Moses. If you believe this, then go to John chapter 3, the verses 16. What does it say? If you believe in the one who is given of God as the only begotten Son, you will not perish. When we refuse to keep the commandments of God, we refuse to believe in the Son. We refuse to believe in the divinity of Jesus Christ. When we refuse these things, we will perish. That is the old time religion, the unadulterated religion. Religion, like it or not, it remains the same for God who spoke it is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is the one who is to come. He is the one who is already seen coming before time is. That that is our God and when we decide to go on the contrary and say these do not apply to me, I will go after my own gods. I will do what I deem to be fit. You are not reinventing sin. Verse number 20, like the nations, the Lord is about to destroy before you. You will perish if you do not obey the Lord your God. Religion, my dear friends, is an issue of whom do you obey? Do you obey Elohim? Do you obey God the Almighty? For he is the one who spoke and it stood still. He is the one who speaks unto your heart this morning. 
And he says, my child, it is high time you heed my call. It is high time you do that which I send you. This is life. As the old elderly statesman put it, I put to you life and death. Choose life and not death. Until you meet again, I pray and hope you will choose life. Blessings and peace.